occasional user. There is a project manager built into AutoCAD Electrical, and in some ways, and a good analogy of a project manager is the road atlas. If you think about a road atlas, roads are uniquely numbered. The roads go from one page to another, and there'll be a page reference advising which page those roads are going off to. That's very similar to wires and the way that wires are numbered and cross-referenced. Or indeed pipes or, or flow processes if it was pneumatics, hydraulics or P&ID drawings. In the back of the road atlas, there's a series of towns and each town has a unique page, column and row reference. A grid reference as to where that town can be located. Now that's the same analogy as a coil to a contact or a parent to a child or a rack to a slot device. But ultimately, what holds the pages of the road atlas together is the binder. The binder holds the road atlas together. Take the binder away and the pages would be completely useless. They'd fall apart, they'd get lost, etc, etc. So the road atlas binder is the same analogy as the AutoCAD Electrical Project Manager. The project manager is holding the pages of the project together. What we're going to demonstrate now is we're going to demonstrate completely from scratch, creation of a new project. We're going to create a drawing content sheet, which gives you an example of reports into drawings. We're going to create a couple of schematics completely from scratch. And we're going to create an assembly drawing. In other words, this is worst case scenario. The worst case scenario from starting from scratch. So I'm going to create a new project. Call it a series, and we'll say OK. We'll create four drawings, so I don't have to create these later. As soon as we say OK, you'll notice that it automatically annotates the title border information into our border. This can be your border, it is only just a DWT file, a drawing template file. I'm going to create another couple of drawings. You never, never have to type in information more than once. You just pick from drop-downs. So as we type in this information, we can reuse it later. We're also entering an installation and location code, which is effectively, to put in English, means assembly and sub-assembly information. We're categorizing the parts as to where they may be located. Now in this instance, I'm using machine and control panel, but quite equally, it could be an aeroplane, and it could be cockpit, Galley, as an example, it could be a motor car harness, and in that instance you might have dashboard, uh, engine bay, rear right cluster light, etc, etc. These are different areas of manufacture. Just create a couple more schematics. As you can see, I don't have to retype the information, I'm just picking from drop downs. We'll say accept, and we'll create another drawing, we'll create an assembly drawing, and again we'll fill in the information from the drop downs so that we don't have to retype the information. As we've been creating the drawings, AutoCAD Electrical has automatically been tallying up the total number of drawings. And it's also been filling in the information within our drawing uh, record cards and within our uh, title boxes. However, the customer quite often will come back to you and actually give you some changes in the design. He might give you the contract number, the site reference, and he's giving you that information after you've started the job. In standard AutoCAD, you'd have to go in and out of every single drawing and every single report that's associated, editing the title border information. That, of course, can be extremely time-consuming. If it's a hundred drawings, as an example, which is a typical size project, it may take anything up to a day to actually edit all of those title borders. Not with AutoCAD Electrical. I just right-click over the project, and that's the only command you've really got to learn as an occasional user is the right-click. That's assuming, of course, you're right-handed. Right-click over a project, it gives you project commands. Right-click over a drawing, it will give you drawing commands. So I'm going to change the descriptions, and we might enter the customer name, and this might be the site reference, this might be the customer's contact number, and this might be your own internal job number as an example. 
The descriptions line one, line two, line three can be edited very simply so that it actually tallies up to your existing border. And it also ensures that all engineers within your company always fill in the information identically. I'm going to say accept and I've made a change now to my project. If I just right click over the project I can do a title block update and do all of the drawings in one single click. As you can quite clearly see there, it's annotated the information in drawing number four. But if we open up drawing number one as an example, you'll see that it's also automatically annotated the title border in drawing number one. I'm now going to produce a drawing content sheet. Right click over the project, drawing list report, new report, and here's me drawing list information. I can save this to, to a file. I can save it as ASCII, Excel, Access, XML or CSV. In this instance, I'm saving it as an Excel spreadsheet. And I'm going to save it to my desktop and say close. Very quickly, you can change the report format by clicking the option Change Report Format. You can add additional fields. You can remove fields. You can change the field name and justification. And that's exactly what it's called. You can print, you can save to a file, you can indeed put on drawing. It's a bit similar to a ROM seal advert is AutoCAD Electrical. It does exactly what it says on the tooltip. I'm just going to close down. This is an intelligent table. Now what does an intelligent table mean? If we subsequently add drawings to our project, this table will automatically update itself. Let's have a look at the Excel spreadsheet that we created a second ago though because there's a case for document transmittal notes, OEM manuals, etc. So if we go to the desktop, you'll see there's a file called Drawing List. I'll open that up, and it's put our company logo in the actual report. Of course, that can be your company logo, or indeed your customer's company logo. Very quickly, we've got the information in a format that we can reuse for document transmittals, or indeed, as I mentioned before, OEM manuals.